What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Tuck Rule Takes Motherfuckers, episode 50, the big 5 I feel like that's a big mark for um, podcasts. It is. Um, with me, as always, is Liam McDade. Episode 50, by the way, I didn't know who to go with. So it's either it's awesome. It's either Mike Vrabel. Is that who you're yep. thinking? That's one of them. Or um, Rob Ninkovich. Are you thinking Rob Ninkovich for the other one? Originally thinking of, yeah. Exactly. I don't so if you want to go classic, we can go Vrabel. I tend to go Ninkovich because Vrabel is a coach right now. So he's still kind of behind enemy lines. So yep. for he all intents and purposes, right this is the Rob Ninkovich episode 50. Big milestone. Liam, I'm happy that we did this together. First and foremost, how are you doing? We're recording on a weird day. This is a Wednesday, or is today Thursday? What is today? Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. Today's, today's Thursday, Thursday, so it's a weird day. Uh, um, you're on a roll. Yeah, it, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I am in <laughs> New Hampshire, so yeah. Liam and I Wait, are the closest North. we've ever been. Um, yeah. but Spiritually anyways, and physically. Liam, how are you today, my friend? For a, I almost said Wednesday. For a Thursday, pretty damn all right. You know, delusions of grandeur going on for this upcoming weekend and whatnot. Oh, yes. Got work later, which is going to be depressing. Yeah. I do have a quick question for you, though. When you think of Rob Ninkovich, what is the first go-to play that you think of when you think of that oh, stuff? Oh, God. Uh, it has to be. Because I have one in particular. Whenever I hear Rob Ninkovich, I think of this one play. I... There's a play in the Super Bowl that he made. I know that. But, yeah, I, I, but that's I feel... not what I'm thinking of. I don't know if I think of a main play. I think I just think of him being there almost like, being you know, Teddy mad. Bruschi, you think of plays. I just think of Rob Ninkovich just always making, making plays when he needs to be. I cannot think of one. What do you have? My go-to whenever I think of him is his uh, Mark Sanchez in overtime strip sack fumble recovery to win the oh, game. I for- See, I forget. The Patriots these. went down, kicked a field goal. The Jets had a chance to tie it or win with a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Rob Nikovich ended the game on a strip sack, and mm-hmm. he also picked off Peyton Manning when he was in Denver. He came here in that crazy game. This is what he does. That's why He's Rob Nikovich, Patriots baller. Hall of Famer. Patriots Hall yep. of Famer for sure. Um, yeah, episode 50, baby. But yeah, Friggin, how, are, how are you this week now that you're up in the great white north? I love it. Uh, New, New England in general is leaps and bounds better than Florida. Uh, Florida, I know right Especially now, right I now. shit on it. It's getting it's demolished right now by Ian. Um, <laughs> what a stupid Fucking name Ian. for a hurricane, by the way. But Not imposing um, at all. I don't know any tough Ians. All the no, Ians like, I know oh. are very feeble and weak, built like scarecrows. Yeah, yeah, like like built like twigs. Like, oh, here comes Ian. That that mm. weirdo, that loser. Yeah. So, um, but no, he is. Uh, Ian is destroying Florida. So we made the made the choice to come up here. It was a whole nightmare, dude. We had to like switch the switch the flight two days early. We did it the night before. We had to take a bus to to Fort Lauderdale, which, mind you, that's a three and a half hour bus ride. Because it was the fuck. only. So many flights were sold out and canceled. So that was the only flight available. We, we got up at at 4, 4.30 in the morning, took a bus down there. Then we had to take an Uber, which was 10 minute or Lyft, whichever one, I forget, to the Fort Lauderdale airport. We waited there for two and a half hours. Then we finally got to New Hampshire uh, at like 6, 6, uh, like 6.15 or like 6 o'clock. Like, I don't know how these planes pick up time in the air, but. Yeah, like we took tolls, so we Going got there. Five hundred miles an hour, I guess. I don't know, but either way, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm happy to be with you talking about the Patriots right now, and I this blush. is it, it's such a weird episode because obviously, but yeah. we'll ju- we'll start with the Ravens game. I, we're not going to talk too much about that because that, that to me it was the tale of like two games, like the first yeah. two and a half quarters. I thought we were, I thought we were in it. We were going to win. It was good. Defense yep. was kicking ass. Mac Jones, there's still little mistakes here and there. We'll talk about Mac Jones, obviously. Um, but I think kind of big picture takeaway of this game, your boy was fucking right with his game breaker. Yep. Devonte Parker, Devonte Parker. Do you, his, his stats, let the me stat just lines, five for one fifty six, averaged 31.2 yards per catch discuss i mean like now that this week has come around like ah, incredible i was wrong for my game breaker first of all so obviously of the past yeah. game my game breaker was Devonte parker like he was the impact player of the game the and guy. yet we we did not score a touchdown through the air all three tubs came on the ground which was sick yeah. 
Ramondre, yeah. Damian Harris, and Mac Jones. And Mac Jones, yeah, loved it. Quite loved the it. offensive performance in the running game. And even the passing game wasn't so bad. No. But five for 156 after having four targets and one catch in the first two games completely came out of nowhere. I was shitless beside Amazing. myself without Amazing. speech. Yeah. Amazing. I, I I was watching it and I saw like the first one he thought it was like a slant for like 20 yards or something. I yep. was like, oh, okay, like, like, okay, cool. This, this is my game breaker catch, yeah. I guess. <laughs> and then he took that like 35 yarder up the sideline. Then he had the yeah. toe tap. I mean, you're like, oh, Liam's going to hear about this. <laughs> I was I was sitting there and I was like, thank. I don't know what like I, I bet with my bet with my heart and it ended up being yep. the right thing. So Devontae Parker, I think that's one of the huge takeaways from the game is that it seems like he's him and Mac are pretty much on the same page. They had that miscue yeah. in the end zone where Mac Which audibled sucked. real quick. They didn't, it was a pick. That kind of cost until, him the game. I'd say up until that point. Cause, cause at that point it was what a three, a five point game. It was 31, 26, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, that was where the game pretty much ended. Ravens went down and scored, but you know, the, the one thing I saw with Devonte Parker, he hit or Mac Jones hit him on a like comeback type of a back shoulder route that they missed the game prior against uh, the Steelers. Yes. So you he can tell they here. were working on that. You can, I remember you can that tell. miss against the Steelers was ugly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're, they're doing well, you know, Kendrick Bourne four for 58, uh, Nelson Aguilar two for 41, nothing okay. else really crazy. I have to chime in there because yes. the Patriots gave this game away multiple times. Uh, one of which would be the Mac Jones interception yep. in the end zone. Defense came up clutch as hell per usual. The defense really, this was the, the defense was pushed to the limit here as, yeah. as far as it can go. Like they would get a stop. The offense would turn it over. They would get another stop. Mm -hmm. The offense would go and do nothing. And at that point, like the defense is worn out. They're like, we've given you the ball back two times. How much more can we do? Then they let up a Lamar Jackson, you know, 15 yard rushing touchdown. And you're like, all right, I don't really blame them at this point, no, but really Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, exactly. Mac threads the needle to Nelson Aguilar seed. Beautiful pass. Nelly oh. catches it in stride going up the sideline and it gets cleanly punched out. Stuff like that. Dumb mistakes where he's being frugal with the ball, just throwing it around. Dude comes right up behind him, punches it out. The Devontae Parker, clearly a miscommunication in the end yep. zone. But yep. right before that play, Mac Jones scrambles around, gets like a 13 yard scramble out of it, does his best mm -hmm. Mike Vick impression, juking out people, yep. gets out of bounds. Very next play, just overzealous, throws it in the end zone, intercepted. There were great plays made in this that were quickly wiped away by mistakes. The throw to Nelson Aguilar, boom, fumble. Great play, ruined. The scramble, end zone, interception, just very annoying. I feel for the defense here because they did their job mm -hmm. entirely. They should. Should have been a win, not a single passing touchdown for Mac. Nope. But I still don't think it was a particularly bad game for him. No, it, in that, so I'm I'm looking at his stats right now. It, it, 22 or 32, 321, no touchdowns, three good picks. efficiency, so good yards. Obviously, the picks suck. No one liked any yeah. any of the picks. But in it's yeah. it's such a weird thing to say, but and it's obvious. But if that if those picks aren't this is an amazing yes. Mac Jones oh, yeah. up until and I like people. It's very weird this game because coming out of it and even thinking about it right now, I, the errors were all self-inflicted ones. Like you said, the two big ones were the Aguilar fumble and the Mac Jones pick because up until yes. then, anything that happened before that, the Patriots were still in we're the still, game with those yeah. two plays, but they gave it away. So it's like, I can't, it sucks that you lost. I had this penciled in as a loss anyways. So yeah, like it is what it is. But I don't feel horrible about it. Like I don't. It, it's very weird. It's a very weird thing. But it, you just need to stop fucking turning the ball over. That's what it comes down to. You, you need to stop yeah, turning the it ball. It sounds over. outrageous because it's like, well, if we didn't throw three picks and fumble, we would have won. Like obviously, obviously. But that's the only outcome. I. That's the only real overall thought I have of this game. Other than listen, next week, and I can't even say next week because Mac might not play. I need to to plant the seed here because on a future episode, I am going to freak out about this. I'm done trying to explain away why 
Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith are not being used more. Yeah, I can, I can, I, I, I get it. Blocking and the certain plays, whatever that. Why do you get two of the top six tight ends in the league? Pay them like so and barely, barely use them. And don't give me, well, you know, they're in there blocking. And I, I get that. That's awesome. You don't need to pay Hunter Henry. You don't need to pay them to block. You can get less, less talented tight ends to block. You don't need Johnu Smith, who's an Aaron Hernandez type on the field, not off the field, who can do crazy things with the ball. You don't get a Hunter Henry type who is built like your typical tight end. Get just plug and play tight ends that can block it. It's frustrating. It's yeah, tough like to really are the two highest paid players on our team and they combine for five catches for 32 yards. No tubs. Sorry. It's fucking embarrassing. So I'm putting a pause on it for now because mm-hmm. the offense is going to be a little weird right now with Mac yeah. out, Brian Hoyer. Honestly, saying... if anything, with Mac out, I think the tight ends get relied on more, and it feels like a broken they record. Should. Like I keep saying it, where I'm like, "This is their chance. This is their chance." Each week, I'm like, "This next game. This next game. This is truly the last time." I will say, "Okay, here is where a quarterback relies on the tight ends, where it's like they're not going to be thrown deep. No, they're not going to be going through complicated route trees. Nope, they're going to throw it to the tight end up the seam on the outs. This is this is their opportunity going out on the tree branch." One last time, it has to be. That's what it should be. So I, I just, uh, whatever. That, that's my thing about the tight ends. We got to use yep. them more. Obviously, everybody says that. I'm, I'm this close to being done being the rational fan and talking about it. I'm ready to be the one that freaks out about it. Ready so we'll give out. it, yeah, we'll give it a break. We're we'll ticking time bomb right now, and that time it, bomb will explode in about a week. It's simmering. It is simmering. Yeah. The water is, is about to boil. Um, yes. But going into, but really coming out of the game, there's really only one thing that you can talk about. And this is where I'm going to lead us into pretty much the rest of the podcast here. Mac Jones um, yeah. goes out screaming in pain. Um, I saw people talking shit about that. Fuck you. Um, if you're one of those people, yeah. just straight up, I'm not going to spend Eat any more shit. time on that. Just, yeah, don't yeah. like, every... I, would lo- I would love to see you take a hit like that and be yeah. perfectly composed piss off like come on so um he is he out high ankle sprain so the there's a lot going on with mac jones i'm just going to kind of lay out everything that we know so far and we're just going to dive in on it at first people were thinking the worst he's going to be out there was a tear something like that it's not high ankle sprain it's really the worst ankle sprain that you can get is what i'm seeing so high ankle sprain we don't know the severity of it at worst Eight weeks, he needs the tightrope surgery, which is, you know, the big buzzword everybody's using now. Yeah. Tua got it. Jalen Hurts got it. Um, best great. case scenario. Wait, you had, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Who are those other two quarterbacks that got it? Tua and Jalen Hurts. I don't. Uh, I, okay, is that weird? The, do you realize the connection there? Yes, they're both undefeated right now. No, 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 simpler, simpler. What? They were all three of them were on the same Alabama team. Very weird. So I don't, I, I didn't really put that all together until you were just saying. All of them were teammates. All of them were in the same room. That's weird. They all have the same injury. That's fucking weird. That doesn't, the odds of that happening, I gotta be small. Something in the water in Alabama then that loosens up the ankle tendons. Uh, I guess so. Um, So he, Tommy Curran from uh, Patriots Beat Reports and all that stuff said, best case scenario though. Matt could be out two weeks. So it's anywhere between two to eight weeks for this surgery. So not, or, or this injury, not everybody is a candidate for the surgery. Not everybody needs it. There's a lot of discourse right now saying that Mac Jones should get it. He's showing that he doesn't trust the team by not getting it, by getting a second opinion. The second opinion he's getting is from the doctor who did these surgeries. So we don't know where Max head is at, where the Patriots at. Obviously they both want him to play. Now, Liam, two things here. Did you see Bill Belichick's press conference in full at all? Of course I did. I love it. So I got to watch it. Cause I am in, I am in new England. So it was on TV. 
just I'm, I'm not going to run through. There's not that many quotes. There's really just one quote that kept being said over and over yeah. again. But to start it, someone asked him what's going on with Mac, you know, what's going, whatever. He said, saw Mac a little while ago, definitely getting better. Probably won't practice today. That made me chuckle. Like, yeah, no, no <laughs> shit. No. Probably won't practice yeah, today. There's a chance uh, but, he's not out there. <laughs> but made a lot of progress here in the last 48 hours. So keep plugging away. Take that day by day. See how it goes. That's where we are today. Next question. Someone asked him, blah, blah, blah. He's getting better day by day. We'll see how he is tomorrow. Next question. Day by day. He's smirking at this point. Yes. Oh, of course. Next question. We're going to take it day by day. <laughs> the next question someone asks about um, like specifics about the injury or whatever. Oh, what do I look gee, like? I a doctor? This one. <laughs> what do I look like? A doctor? An orthopedic surgeon? I don't know. Talk to the medical experts. Um, <laughs> someone asked him again. Uh, team doctors, of course, they're ready. They're readily available. So they can always just ask them, but no one does. They asked Bill Belichick. So they asked him again, what the <laughs> experts told him. They said, Bill, what did these experts tell you? He said for no reason to start it. He said day by day, what that's like his opening to everything. <laughs> We're it's, on like, to Cincinnati. Bill, it's like, Bill, what's uh, what did the doctors tell you? Well, day by day, we'll evaluate him day by day. I mean, <laughs> what difference does it make to me? You think I'm going to read the MRI? That's not my job day by day. <laughs> um, so moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots are taking this injury day by day. Something tells me that, um, today is a day, Liam. And I told you before we jumped on, this is why I love that you're not on Twitter that much. Cause you don't see the things that come up. Yep. Mike Giardi, um, about less than an hour before we started recording, he tweeted per sources, Mac Jones is in the facility and participating in game planning. The Patriots QB has told multiple teammates to not count him out of this weekend's game at Green Bay and is still operating as if he has a chance. Practice is scheduled for today uh, a little before one o'clock. What that means to me, guys, Mac Jones is coming back, not this week, next week. I think Mac Jones is coming back to play the Lions. The fact that he's there, that he is participating in everything, that he's telling his teammates, like, hey, don't count me out. And, and it wasn't said in jest, like other reports of are course. in there. It's like, no, he's, he's actually saying like, Hey, don't count me out. Belichick, by the way, did not count him out for this week against the Packers this game. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes sense. I mean, he's not going to tell anybody anyways, but no, um, kind of like I was telling you, Liam, when I was texting you as this was going on, obviously you said Bill's not going to give anything away in what he says, but I do. I just find it interesting. The words he used and how he was talking, he wasn't talking like someone who is expecting the quarterback to be out for a long period of time, you know, cause yeah. he's talked about there've been players in the past who have been hurt and he's like, yeah, you know, we'll, you know, we're not really gonna, you know, we're not really going to discuss that. We'll, we'll, yeah. you know, when, when that comes out, it comes out, you know, you guys saw the injury, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yep. There is a lot of optimism going on right now around, um, around Bell, around uh, Mac Jones playing and all that stuff. So I don't think he's going to play this weekend, but, Liam, hearing everything, Bill Belichick's press conference and that, that, uh, that tweet that he is in the building participating in some sort of offensive scheme shit, getting ready to go. That's got to brighten up your mood, right? Well, of course. I mean, something tells me that this is a very day-by-day matter and that there is hope on, for maybe really? an upcoming day. <laughs> yes. Maybe not this day, maybe not the next day, but – the day after that, there could be optimism, or maybe two days after that. It Some is days truly shit. maybe three days. Yes, a hundred percent. So today things don't look entirely optimistic. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after that, things will be a little more optimistic. High ankle sprains are brutal though. I uh when I broke my leg, I was hoping it was a high ankle sprain. I was walking around on it for a week telling everyone it was a high ankle sprain, self-diagnosed by Google being the stud doctor I am. Of course. So, and ended up going to get it checked out. They told me I had broken my leg and that if I had a high ankle sprain, it would probably be worse off than if I broke my leg. So when I heard oh, Mac shit. Jones had a high ankle sprain, I was like, oh, no, like, that's not good because I had a broken leg. I was out of commission for like, you know, a month or month and a half. And uh, I don't know. So that's one of the things that really sticks with me when I heard he had that. I'm like, shit, this could either be you know really bad, like they said, but that's I don't know. Good. 
No, it's not. So I am not entirely optimistic. Granted, I'm kind of with you on this one. He's definitely not starting against the Packers. And I have serious doubts about the week after that, too. Again, day by day matter. Maybe in a couple of days, I'll change my mind. But I am not optimistic about these two weeks. I understand how much leg injuries suck. My own personal experience, it would be hard pressed for me to imagine he gets back next week. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. The house isn't burning down either. I still really like Brian Hoyer, as lame as that sounds. I do too. I do too. Yeah. Do you think, by the way, for next week against the Lions, even if Mac could possibly start, it's the Lions? Do you still yeah. sit him out? I like. I that was going to be my big do, thing right? because you can really fuck that up worse by putting yeah. him in there. And I was going to ask if you were concerned about that because they, you know, Bill seems, I think he's just fucking with them, but he seems optimistic that Mac could be ready to play this Sunday. I think he's just messing yeah. with them. But realistically, like they wouldn't put him out there this week. And I hope they wouldn't do it the week after that because if he gets that re injured that he's out for the season, like you then, can break then that done. fucking angle and then you're done. Yeah. Uh, and he's know. in the last game, he is way more mobile than any of us thought. Like he is maybe way the best more. scrambling quarterback in the league. So I was like, this guy, yeah. this guy's fantastic. We got to protect those ankles of his. <laughs> I don't think it'd be worth it. Sit him for these two games. The Packers kind of suck. The Lions are still the Lions. They're fucking cursed. They're a shit franchise. So these two upcoming games aren't that important in the grand scheme of things we have harder ones down the line that you and me have talked about as long as he is healthy for the bills game when they are dressed up in all red that's all Mm -hmm. i care about the first Bills game is the (laughs) game that i care about the most so yeah suit him up make sure he's healthy for that i'm not worried about these next two games brian hoyer as a starting quarterback touchdown to interception ratio 53 and 33 not terrible but no. 65% of his uh, 65% completion percentage, he's safe. He's mm-hmm. easy. He will take the what the defense gives him. He'll make some mistakes, but he's not going to, you know, he has a positive interception, touchdown to interception ratio. He knows the system, has been here fucking years and years and Forever. years. Forever. He and left years. and came back. Yep. Yeah. And the last time we saw him against the Kansas City Chiefs when Cam Newton was the quarterback, it was ugly. It was not Not good. great. Not great. Nope. <laughs> But Bailey Zappi off the bench, too, if, if Brian Hoyer really sucks shit, like mm-hmm. if he eats handfuls of shit in the first two quarters, I am fine with putting Bailey Zappi in. But I still have, you know, at least minuscule faith in Brian Hoyer. So do I. And I was I was just thinking this as you were talking about how, you know, Brian Hoyer isn't going to make that, you know, that crippling mistake. I'm not talking about the chiefs game. I'm talking about overall. We're not going to specific yeah. games like that. No. So, so let me, let me kind of, spin this a little bit so brian hoyer is going to start against the packers with how mac jones has been playing the last three weeks very good i think he's still the guy all that stuff but he has been throwing some picks at inopportune times because of whatever so we've had to be critical on the steelers game we said he was bad brian hoyer i'm not he's not a step up by any means i'm not even trying to insinuate that at all he is a safer pick I was overall kind of you know looking at it from like the macro point of view he's an overall safer pick than Mac Jones going against the Packers who let me just tell you their last game against the Bears by the way the Bears um they threw the ball 11 times they ran the ball 27 times for a bucky so I the don't most bear stat I've ever heard I don't think that Brian Hoyer is going to be asked to do much you know, so I, I just, I feel like this game and it's weird to say, and I do feel like a little bit of our Patriots bias is coming out. I still think the Patriots can beat the Packers, the Patriot, the Packers yeah. on offense, aren't these juggernauts that they used to be. They don't have Devonte Adams. They don't have, you know, Jordy Nelson, obviously long gone. They don't have that solid. They have uh, Aaron Jones. Very good. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. This isn't going to be an easy game to, for the Patriots to beat. but the Patriots defense is very, very good. Yeah, very sure. Good. They gave up 17 points to Lamar Jackson in the third quarter. I get that. That's Lamar Jackson. That's he scrambles yep. like crazy. He's on and an some MVP of those picks, caliber tear. The touchdown to Mark Andrews was bullshit. Like that was a hope and a prayer. McCordy didn't get his head around in time. So, so against the Packers, I do think that the Patriots can beat them. But we'll talk about the Packers in you know towards the end in a little bit here. 
if Mac Jones is out the full eight weeks, let's just go doomsday scenario just to kind of start. Patriots are playing the Packers. That scares you a little bit, but then they're playing the Lions, the Browns, the Bears, the Jets, the Colts, the Jets, and the Vikings. If there is a stretch for Mac Jones to be out, this is the stretch. Because guess what, Liam? The game he comes back in, do you know the game he would come back and play? The first, Say he was out for eight weeks. The first exactly. game he comes eight back. Weeks. Red jerseys, December 1st, at home against the Buffalo fucking Bills. And how hype would that be? The more I talk about this shit, see, this is why I love Tuck Rule Takes, because we come on here. It's like a therapy session. I'm going through all yeah. the emotions. So Spicy. let's just say, let's, let's just run through some shit. So Mac Jones yeah. obviously not playing this weekend. No. I do think that the pack, that the Patriots can win. Worst case scenario, yeah. let, though. Let me craft a quick story line for this Packers game. You remember no, in like 2011? 2011, Matt Flynn comes in as the Packers starting yep. quarterback, throws yep. seven touchdowns against the Patriots and of beats us. Now it's Brian Hoyer's turn with fucking our backup quarterback. We come in seven tubs Don't by Brian oh. Hoyer in an ass kicking, completely rolls reversed. 10, uh, 11 years later, we come in, love. flip the script. Imagine that would be so fucking funny. But anyway, I would love it. it. It I, would. It'd be so- intense. It's not necessarily out of, well, I don't think the seven, the seven touchdowns, I guess just a win in general, <laughs> yeah. not, not out of the realm of possibility guys. It's no. not, it, it's not the end of the world. I think when Mac went down, my first thought was punt on the season as done. Cause I thought he tore his, like, I thought his like came off. Yeah. Like I thought he was dead. Yeah. If he's done for the season, then a hundred percent punt on the season or fuck. That's not the case though. So he could come back in the next couple weeks. So Packers game, Day by day, do what now. you can. Do what you can. It, it, it's day by day. That's what I hear. It is. So, do do what you. That's going to be the title of this episode, by the way. Day hundred percent. Not eating. <laughs> not there's. That's going to be. It. So Packers game is what it is. The Lions, at home, like the. I mean, I'm not. I like the Lions. They're a fun team. I have no qualms with them. You're yeah. going to beat the Lions at home. If you lose yeah. to the Lions at home, that that's when you punt on the season because that I think is the end of the world. Yeah. Um, then after that, you go to Cleveland to play the Browns. Mm-hmm. I, that, that doesn't Bill playing his old quarterback. That's a slam dunk. God, his Bill old knows team his weaknesses. and yeah. his old quarterback. That doesn't, yeah. I am not like that game to me. And all the players he exiled by trading to the Browns. Yeah, exactly. It, honestly, that game, if Mac Jones is still out these two games, you might want to keep him out that game because Miles Garrett's on the Browns. You might not yeah. want him to, you know, be all no. over him. So then you play the bears at home. Justin Easy. Fields is, Monday is, night is you know, dumb. tricky, you know, Justin Fields is tricky, but I don't see like, I, he's not crazy. The bears after their win um, in week one, they have floundered. They are back to being a trash can of the NFC. You play the jets in New York. Not even going to talk about that. Zach Wilson will be yeah. back. So even though I like Zach, but Wilson, then he'll have thrown 17 interceptions. He might be out again at that point. Um, then after that, you got the Colts at home. The Colts seem yep. just because you see the name, the Colts. Oh, that's a tough matchup. The Colts are not good this year. No, like they not. are, they are wildly below average. They always play the Pats off. They do, but does Matt Ryan? No, no, and he's so, going to be upset that the Patriots ruined his life. Not worried about that. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then you got the Jets again. Like, come on. And then you got Kirk Cousins in Minnesota, which I mean, Kirk Cousins can always pull out a win. Yeah, um, unless it's on Monday Night them. Football that we're golden. Justin Jefferson's really good, but I think Mac is back well before that game. Judging by kind of what's being trended right now with him, yeah, I am all of a sudden wildly still optimistic about this because I think nine wins might get you in the playoffs this year in the AFC. Yeah, like, yeah, like we're gonna have to adjust our win loss totals because we obviously didn't expect Mac to be out. I'll tell you this: if if the Patriots beat the Packers. My win loss total is still on because I had them two and two because this next stretch right here was their seven game win streak that I had them on. So I, I had them losing Mac, to the they, bills. Huh? Can you think without Mac, they still rattle off seven? No, I'm assuming Mac comes back at some point in this seven game. He has to, if he doesn't, then, then but like you said, by the may bears have game, to, he's back basically. If he's back by the bears game and the Patriots have won the lions Browns and you know, 
Bears game if he is playing, even if he's not. If they win those first three games and Mac is back, I I I think you can keep the prediction on, um, because then you get the Jets, Colts, Jets, Vikings. You know, then they go into the tough part, which actually, you know, fuck that. Since we're looking at the schedule, fuck Bills that. game, Bills game, tough game. Did the Bills, Cardinals. Kyler Murray is good, but I, who knows? I forget if I had them winning or losing. I think I had them losing to that. But then after that, you got the Raiders and Bengals. Let's not act like those ga- those games look wildly different than they did coming yeah. into the year. Seriously, I thought the, the Bengals. Suck. I thought the Bengals revamped their line. They didn't. Do you hear all this Josh McDaniels chatter? Like, like the negative stuff, saying that maybe Dude, he people hate him. Yeah. I, that's why I don't understand <laughs> why everybody thought. See, I'm in the basement. I got the crazy Dude. mic going on. My brother's got a badass mic. I'm ready to go. Like people hated when Josh McDaniels was on the Patriots. Why is he running draw plays on third and 11? What is he doing? Then he leaves and they go, the Patriots have no offense coordinator. They're completely fucked. And then he goes over head coach Raiders. Oh, and three. That last game was atrocious. Eight piles Horrible. of shit. Yeah. Horrible. This is why everybody talked about, for some reason, he became like the godsend that was going to bring the Raiders to the promised land and the ghost of Al Davis was going to come and fuck the league in the face. These fans, you got to pick a side. It's so ridiculous. I hate Josh McDaniels. Oh my God, he left. What the fuck is going on? And then, oh my God, he's so terrible. Jesus, the Raiders are fucked. Fire. It's it's crazy. When he was here, because I know that we were the fans where it was like, Josh McDaniels isn't as good as everybody says. He's not as bad as everybody says. He's just, he's a, he's a solid. Yeah. He's a solid offensive coordinator. He is clearly not a good coach. No, he's a terrible coach in Denver. He was awful in Oakland or Vegas, whatever it is. He's clearly fucking terrible. He was a great cog in our machine. He was a gear that kept the overall Patriots dynasty going, but he was no more important than Gerard Mayo. Nope. Then, Steve Romeo Cornell, any of the guys that were there during those championship runs, he was just another part of the overall machine that was the Patriots dynasty. Yep. Now, like all the other guys who go off and try and find a career, Charlie Weiss, um, Eric, uh, what's Jean, his name uh, with the with the butt chin, um, Bill O'Brien. Oh, Bill O'Brien! All those yep. guys they go off. Bill O'Brien actually was the only one of them who had relative success. The Texans were a playoff. Ah, team a little anyway. bit. He's a, he's in college now though, and I think he's doing. He yeah. should do well there. So, but friggin' the rest of them all flamed out. None of them had good teams. Josh McDaniels got fired midway through the season with the Broncos. Yep, it's so ridiculous. Yep. I love it. And, and I was up here and uh, my dad and I were talking about, you know, just football and everything. He was like, Oh, cause it, we were at 99, by the way, my favorite restaurant, new England special love Classic. 99. We're Do sitting they not there have them in Florida. No, no, they don't have them in Florida. I hate it. Wow. I hate it. They have Applebee's, Fuck which is still great. But like 99 is like Dollar the one for me, nothing special, yeah. just tips and tenders. If you're from new England, you know, tips and love tenders. It. Are the it's shit. so good. So like we're looking the, at the TV. Uh, the what? 259 bud select. So good. They had. I can't wait. I'm. I'm here until next Monday. So we're gonna end up going again. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be amazing. Rip it off. Um, we're looking at the TV, and it was something about the Raiders. And he goes, oh, "Don't you feel bad for the Raiders?" I did like a double take. I was like, "Fuck no! Why would I feel bad for the Raiders? Every I don't particularly like anyone on the team. Like I don't really no. dislike them, but I have no. In fact, no, I point and laugh at Devontae Adams. Like, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Why would you go there? I have no real emotion thoughts to anybody on there i think Derek carr is was wildly overrated last year when people were saying he was an mvp candidate to start the year yeah, i was like just yeah. wait and see and that's yeah. what happened but i don't we'll see where the rate what the raiders look like at that point that game might not be as difficult as everybody thinks and then yeah. you got the Bengals, who i i do still think the Bengals will write the ship to an extent um because they are they are a good team but just seeing what they looked like and everything that game's at home too. And it's a day before yeah. Christmas. That's going to be a cold game. Like I said, if it's snowing, mark it down as a win, but Dumb. I, yeah. those two games are not as difficult. And you got to think the Patriots would, would have gotten their shit together at that point. You know, that's going to be like week, to what so. 15 week, 14 and 15. I do that's worry about the Raiders match. though. Josh McDaniels won like four games with the Broncos, one of which was against the Patriots. True, true. But could you see Josh McDaniels trying to be too cutesy with the offense and dialing up some shit? 
in trying to get things I could, going. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. Well, the well, weapons see, he had back then are a lot better than the weapons he had now. He had Brandon Marshall for sure. All these studs on the offense. For sure. Now he just yeah. has Devonte Adams and Brandon Bolden, yeah. who's killing it. Yeah, I, I all with big Brandon Bolden guys. Um, but I don't. We'll see as we get closer to that game. We'll talk about it more because it's tough to talk about a game that's December eighteenth, which is my birthday. Tough to talk about that. It's also a prime time game. I could see Derek Carr pissing down his leg. I could see Josh McDaniels doing it. Who knows? Um, but then the next one against the Bengals, those two games aren't as crazy. So I f- and then you end the year at dolphins and bills. I don't think that we can even come close to punting on this season. And it all depends on what happens next week, the week after in the following couple of weeks against the Browns and the bears. Yep. So I, I just Mac Jones being out, it's a big deal. It, and this is something I want to ask you. Do you think that, do you think this stunts his growth in any way? If he's out, say he's out for seven, eight weeks, because he's starting the year. It obviously it's been a little bumpy with the picks. You like to see less picks. Um, do you see? Cause again, I was talking to my dad about it and it was like, do you think this is assuming worst case scenario? He's out for the eight weeks. This is one of those things where it's like Mac Jones was promising and everything, but he got hurt and he just could never get back on track. And then he was gone a year and a half later. Like that is that thought creeps into my head because it is a nightmare scenario. Do you see any way that that happens? Yeah, unfortunately, I do. I mean, you yeah. got to be realistic. I, don't I was wanna, hoping I don't you would say no. Oh. No, I don't want to. I don't want to be like the dickhead Patriots fan. I try and not be like the very like ignorant Pats yeah. fan, and it's tough at times because it's really mm-hmm. easy to be very easy. without without those last three picks in the last game. His season stats, he had two touchdowns, two picks. Now, for this season, overall, he has about 800 yards, two picks, uh, five picks, two touchdowns. Not great stats. Not great at all. They're already starting out not good. He's going to come back, probably be a little nervous on the ankle and whatnot. Does it get into his psyche? It's hard to tell. I want to say that he's mentally tough, that he'll be fine. Seems like he is. It seems like he is this, like, mental. he's he's a fucking goober. But it seems yes. like he is like this tough, and that's what everybody says about him. So yeah, yeah, that's what I, I worry I, about I is the scrambling ability that we saw in the last game that I loved. That mm-hmm. two point conversion, which totally should have counted. He was running all over the field, fantastic, doing shit Tom Brady couldn't even dream of when it comes to using nope. his legs there. And I worry that that won't be a part of his game anymore. Where which yeah. is fine, pocket passers normally succeed, but. I need you to move around. I liked what I saw. Even if it puts you in harm's yep. way, I like that he can run the ball. I like that he can move around in the pocket, scramble out left or right and get a pass off. I don't know if he will be as eager as he was in the last game. He had had no serious injuries up until the last game. He was out there free balling it, just playing mm-hmm. backyard football, and it looked beautiful. I don't know if that will continue. Stuff like that hangs in your craw. He looked like he was in a lot of pain. I'm sure he will think about how much pain he was in the next time he's scrambling around and whatnot. Especially in that first game when he comes back, he's going to be thinking, please don't let this happen again. Hopefully he you know, goes in with the utmost confidence. But in the back of his mind, I would be anyway thinking that. That's what I worry about more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is there a chance that he flames out? Yes there's a chance that anyone flames out like yeah freaking there's a chance Patrick Mahomes in the next like three seasons does fucking terrible and, yeah yeah you know he's, he'll league. still yeah. have job security yeah 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 but I don't know I don't if we're putting in percentages I say there's like a 40 percent chance that Mac flames out it's it's you know decently high like it could happen but I think it's more likely he doesn't I, I, like you said it's all going to come back to just his his mentality when he comes back from the injury. Cause if he comes back and there's like, there's obviously the human element where there's always going to be a little bit of like hesitancy at first, but if he comes back and it's just kind of something that wears off in that game, you know, a couple drives takes his first hit. He realizes, Oh shit. So I think Edelman said that he was like, you know, when you come back from injury, you want to get hit because you want to have that like positive thought where you're like, Oh shit. Like, okay, I got hit and I didn't. Okay. Like I didn't break. So I, I feel like, if he does come back, that's why if he doesn't come back against the Lions, I don't want him to come back against the Browns because I don't want yeah. him to, to be thinking about Miles Garrett coming in, destroying him. So yeah. if he does, it is what it is, then then maybe he, he'll he be fine with it. But 
I agree because right now the Patriots offensive line, I looked at before I came, before we started recording, they are in the bottom five in um, in percentage pressures, like how many uh, pressures they give up per snap. Uh, yep. per QB hits for per QB hurries. They're not doing well. No. Um, but and which it is, shows with max decision-making. Like I said, he has two touchdowns, five picks. He's been, losing. yeah, you can see he's getting hurt, but it's, it's another one of those stats where like, I feel like when the Patriots offensive line has, been, they've been good for the stretches they're good for the Patriots offense looks really good. And it's really good. I think that's what's tainting my my thought of them right now or this offense as a whole. Cause like when they look good, they look really good and they look good for a fair amount of time. But when they look bad, it's not like past year or, or not, I don't want to say past years because this team isn't doing anything catastrophic catastrophically bad. It's just it's not like other times where you know when when like mistakes happen, but they're it's not like the worst case scenario. When mistakes yeah. happen for this team it's fucking DEFCON five worst case scenario. Yeah. It is a pick in the end zone. It's a fumble yeah. when you're coming back. It's a strip sack for a touchdown. Like there, Just there are no, there are no, like other than that one dropped pick by the Steelers linebacker or, or Steelers DB, whoever, there are no like, Ooh, like, Oh, thank God that one did, you know, we'll live to fight another yeah. day. It always 90, seems to go against us. 99% of them are worst case scenarios. It's like driving down, down five. You're at the 10 yard line pick coming back the drive after ready to go. Nice big pass over the middle fumble turnover. And of course, what happens on those drives for the other teams, they go down and score. Like there's yeah. no, there's no breaks being caught right now, which I, I think is another reason why I'm, actually kind of high on this team than other people may be because it's it there's no way it's going to stay like that the mistakes and like the outcomes of the mistakes you have yeah, I mean, to realistically, think there's no the offensive way. line the offensive line has been so bad like it, it, as a, a fan you got to be like all right you know by week five mm -hmm. you know i hope that they pull themselves together a little more that's by normally week, it yep. by week 10 they'll look a lot better so that's what i'm hoping because they yeah. have been bad there's a reason mac jones fucking messed up his ankle it's because they kept getting in there he was scrambling yeah. around like a madman because yeah. he had you know a second to throw yeah he only had i think he is in the the bottom half of the league in time to throw as well now one thing i wanted to throw out throw out at you about the offensive line isaiah win has been really the glaring weakness with penalties and kind of letting up you know pressures hits all that stuff he plays right tackle the Patriots did sign someone to their practice squad who also plays right tackle. We talked about him before Marcus cannon guy yes. that we all like very good at his job Been here for a while. What week do you think, or do you think it happens? Marcus cannon eventually takes over for Isaiah when Isaiah Wynn is also making a shit ton of money right now. There were, remember there were talks about him possibly being traded. I feel like that's going to be, a piece that's going to happen at some point. Isaiah Wynn is going to be gone, whether he's bench traded, released, whatever it happens to be. And Marcus Cannon steps in because he can't be any worse than Isaiah Wynn, you know, and I'm not, and Isaiah Wynn is still good. He still shows skills of being good. And, you know, he just has the spurts where he's bad. Just seems like his play. He looks like a bad player who has spurts of being good, as opposed yes. to a good player who has a, like, like David Andrews. Yeah, he'll great center, match. great center. But yeah, every once in a while, he'll he'll you know whiff on a block or something. Cole Strange been playing very well. He whiffs on a block that happens to be the block that ends up hurting Matt Jones. Like again, yeah. another catastrophic thing. Cole Strange has been very good all year. He misses yeah. a block. At it the can't end just of the be a game. regular sack. It, no, yeah. can never just be a regular thing. Can we can never have good things with this year. No, nope. but but yeah, do you? Do you think that maybe Cannon coming in helps or, 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 and do you also think this line does get it together by week five or week six? Cause I still have hope because I've seen it happen so many times before. I think it's one of those things where hopefully it's an experimental thing for bill where it's like, maybe if Mac isn't back by the lions game, they're like, all right, but we'll see how this upcoming game goes against the Packers who don't have a tremendously good defensive line. No, if they if they are just ripping up Brian Hoyer and they don't have an above average line, then Bill's like, all right, something has to be done because when Matt yep. comes back, he's going to get jacked up by even the you know twenty third ranked defensive line, like bottom half of the league. We can't stop them either. So in the Lions game, Brian Hoyer still out there. He's like, all right, we're going to try an experiment. 
mm-hmm. we can beat up Brian Hoyer all we want. Yeah, I mean, at that's the end why of the he's day. in there. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's why he's in there. You are the backup quarterback. We don't expect much from you. Sorry, you're going to get hell. This is going to be an experimental time. Let's throw Marcus Cannon in there. Give him a game to figure it out. I mm-hmm. think hopefully it's something like that where Bill's like, all right, we are playing with free money right now. We have Brian Hoyer. Let's just try shit. We're going to do some trick plays. We're going to fumble around with the offensive line. Hell, Please, maybe we switch around plays. the receiving core. Let's do anything to try and figure this out. Change up the game plan a little bit. See if that works for Brian Hoyer. If it works for him, then it'll probably work a lot better for Mac. Just a better yeah. quarterback, especially at this period in their career. Mm-hmm. So I think this is the time to start experiment. You Playing around with free money, work something out. Yeah, I agree. I feel like that that's the way that – Belichick's probably thinking that same line of thinking where it's like, you know, we, we do have some time here because the opponents aren't too tough moving forward. You know, now if this happened during the stretch where you got the bills, Cardinals, Raiders, Bengals, that would suck. Like, like, because, because regardless of what you think about those teams, those teams without Mac Jones on the other side, like I, that's, that's not going to be tough. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the Packers don't have an overly impressive line, which I think it, this these next couple of weeks are going to be big for Isaiah Wynn and the offense, like you said, because I it's just these are the weeks. This is the time when the offense normally rounds into shape, and it sucks to try to do that when your starting franchise quarterback or budding franchise quarterback is out with a high ankle sprain. So it's like you yeah. it, you have to like now push that entire schedule up a little bit. You know, because yep. I mean, granted, but even if the offensive line starts to gel, Mac Jones, like you said, him and Hoyer are, are relatively similar in how they play. You know, it's yep. not like you're, it's it's not like you're going to be having him come in for like a Cam Newton type or something like that. Um, where oh, by the, did you see all the talk about the people saying the Patriots should bring back Cam Newton? Yeah, I was at the forefront. Mac Jones being like, out. Yeah, I was like that, bring him back. Let, let's let's show, what fucking why. Cam, what are we? Why not? Don't you want to win games? Yes, I do. Which is the basis of my argument. (laughs) Why are we bringing back Cam Newton? Or why is that even a He's a winner. There is no fucking when. Since when? Since ever. Every season, Cam Newton wins. You dumb boy. No, wrong. He was with Carolina last year. They sucked. When he was with the Patriots, we sucked. They went one and five. Or he went one and five of the player in carolina what do you go what do you go what was one and five oh and okay. five as a starter but okay cool cool that, cool, cool, cool. that has yep. no bearing on cam newton that team's bad baker mayfield can't win ah, with that okay. team okay patrick okay. mahomes <laughs> would be able to win with that team and when he was on the patriots a subpar roster no wide receivers seven and nine i'll take that i'll take that all day i didn't that's I, winning in, i did not i mean i mean by definition you lost more than you won so it was not winning he did not I do not hate Cam Newton, by the way. I feel like, really? that needs to, I, feel like, like I have do. to say that all the time. I hate him on the Patriots. There's no reason for him to be here. Um, but he he, he, knows he will the system. not be. He, he can come does in. He? And, does he? Does he know yes, the system? Yes, he, yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> Fucking what he would system? Come in, he would come in, smoke the Packers, smoke the Lions, and then Mac could be back and it would be no problem. Okay, so Brian Hoyer is going to be starting. Yes. Um, I feel like how many rushing see... touchdowns is Brian Hoyer going to get? I Fucking don't give none. a shit. He could have zero for the rest of his life. As long as he wins games, I don't, I don't care. He's going to win games. I don't care. I do. I think he would win more games than Cam Newton. Be. I don't, we spent far too much. I shouldn't even have brought it up. I knew what I was doing. I knew I was opening up the yeah, can. Of Cause I was the one who started all these Cam Newton back to the Patriots rumors. I don't go on Twitter, but when Mac Jones got hurt, I hopped on, hopped onto all my burners, started typing away on every Patriots media site I could find. Can't, they should sign Cam Newton if they want to win. They need Super Cam back. I went through all of them on all my different accounts. I was the one who started this fire because, because we are talking about Superman right now. This is a former MVP. No, he's he's Clark Kent right now. He is not Mm-mm. Superman. Yeah, yeah, he's Clark Kent yes, right he now because he's not in a uniform. You oh sign God. that man, Superman is in the building. No, he is not in a uniform because he is Clark Kent, not the other no, way. Around. He's not in a uniform because he was on a shit fucking team last year. Oh, That's why he's no. not in a uniform. I can't believe I. I still I can't like for all the for all the similarities we have thinking about sports and things like that. It it is crazy that you uh uh. A smart, level-headed, you know, knowledgeable fan. Yeah, that's me. You get your jollies off thinking about Cam Newton. 
There's no jollies. I am realistic. I look at a 6'6", 250-pound quarterback with a bazooka of an arm and legs like He does a have a big arm. He does have a big arm. He does? Still does after and, all these years. Of imagine, imagine the damage he could do with deep threats, with Devontae, with Kendrick Bourne, with Nellyville. Come on. He didn't have any of these guys. He was throwing to Demir Bird. You know where Demir Bird is right now? I really don't. Is he even in the league? He's on the fucking Bears. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. God. Demir Bird that revenge game him? coming up. Yeah, yeah not. Yeah, it's not no. working. It's not working. It's not working. So I know that that's crazy. Not it's not working because he has a better quarterback throwing him the ball too than Cam Newton. That's wild. Um, wow, that's that's out of pocket. That was kind of weird because I don't even think that about Justin Fields. That was that was mean. Exactly. That was mean spirited by me. That was that was because you're, you're a hater. I get it. I get it. I'm not a hater. I hate you the are. the 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 crazy people talk about Cam Newton. It turns into yeah, but he 2015 Cam and he won the yeah. MVP. He went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, you're goddamn right. He did, and he was tremendous then. He, he I think like Cam Newton eleven stretch, touchdowns for us in that season. Cam Newton stretch of time when he was Super Cam, he was arguably the he the greatest running threat type quarterback with the football. I would put him above prime Lamar Jackson right now. I'd put him above even maybe Mike Vick. And I love Mike Vick. Hot take. Cam Newton was incredible for like a little, little bit, but right now he is not, he is super. He is not even Superman. He is like knockoff Walmart brand Clark Kent right now. That's what he is. And I do not want him. About no. The Seahawks game. Cam Newton's not coming back to the Patriots. That's where, Four, that's where we're going to end 400 passing yards, a rushing touchdown, two passing awesome. touchdowns. That's great. That's awesome. He can, he can rest on that while he's sleeping jobless right now. Good for him. All the teams that need quarterbacks, no one is ringing his phone. There is a reason for it. Bill, Bill knows what he has to do. Yeah, he knows. He's going he's gonna to suffer with some Brian Hoyer, and then Mac Jones is going to come back and lead the Patriots to the Super Bowl. Um, that, that, I don't even think that. That's a hot take. But, okay, so with, with Mac Jones, overall, moving forward, I feel a billion times better than I did when the Ravens game ended. Because I think when that ended, everybody was doom and gloom, end of the world. Right now, I am very cautiously optimistic moving forward. I feel like you feel the same way. Talking about the Packers game, though, with Brian Hoyer, realistically, and, and I've been trying to, to separate my, the you know realistic reality with my Patriots fandom. Realistically, I do still think the Patriots can win because I don't think that this is going to be a game, even if Mac Jones was in the game, this wouldn't be a game where they'd win going offense versus offense with, with the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. This is going to be a game where I think the defense is going to have to show up. They're going to have to try to contain um, the Packers for as much as they can, which I think they can do because the Packers, like I said before, they're not this wagon of an offense. And I think you can run on this Packers defense. And right now you got Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, two absolute studs in the backfield. In this offensive line, wants to to run they want to run block that's all they want to do they can't fucking pass protect so they got to be able to do something they can run block so i'm picking right now patriots are going to beat the packers i don't know what the score is yet maybe maybe i'll come to that when we're done but i going out on the limb and this is going with my heart and my head though because of the reasons i just said you can run on the team packers offense isn't as scary I, I think if you can manage this game and not have the back breaking turnovers that they've had, Yo. you can beat the Packers. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, think this is a win and I guarantee you if they win, you're going to get the shit. Do you just sit Mac Jones out all year? And do you have Brian Hoyer play the whole year? Yeah. Oh, I'm I sure. Can't, can't wait for that. I am not so confident. It's a win. I think mm-hmm. it's more of a morality win where it's like they are still in the game from start to finish. They lose by like three points. They lose by a touchdown. Like even if they lose, it's one of those games where it's like, we stuck in here with this mm-hmm. proof that this team is good enough to compete. You know, they're not going to lose by 30, 40, even 20. I don't think it's going to be a game like that. I no. think it's going to be no, close no, no. and it's going to give everyone hope that, Hey, when Mac Jones comes back, we are going to be a very competitive, very competent 
upper half of the league team. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's close. We very well could win, but it's tough for me to say, you know, we are going to beat Aaron Rodgers. It seems like every time he plays the Patriots, he does pretty fucking well. Yeah, I'm not overly like don't don't get my my tone. I'm not yeah. overly confident. I think this is a like a 65 like 35 type of a uh, confident yeah. thing. You know, like I'm 60 that is good math. I right? say so it took me a second. You yeah. see like I Yeah, I know. I saw I you trying like, to compute shit, shit, that shit, in your mind. You're like 65, um, what's the rest of it? It took like I I am that's where I'm at. So I, I'm like not supremely confident, but I can I can see the path to win with the Patriots against the Packers right now. It was tougher to see a path to win against the Ravens, I think, than it is yeah. to see a path to win right now because you can you run the ball, control the clock, which Patriots can run the ball. Say what you want about their offense. They can yeah. run the ball. Um, and the that's, Packers that's aren't how putting up it. tremendous numbers. The most points they've scored against the team was 24 against the Bears. And the Bears, like, defense is okay. It's, yeah. it's not great. It's not bad. So no, what, 14 crazy. points against the Buccaneers. They're coming off a, a wow, we really scraped that one out because Tom Brady mm -hmm. came back, could have tied it with a two-point conversion. Yep. The whole stadium fucked that up for him because they showed like the play sheet on the Jumbotron or whatever it was. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you don't show Aaron Rodgers what you're doing. Big mistake. You fucked no, that one that... up. But so the Packers are like, we just stole one basically. Mm -hmm. So they're coming off something like that. They're riding high, but like not extremely confident. They're like, yeah, we just beat the goat. I think they come in here. Aaron Rodgers probably does pretty well, but we mm -hmm. can keep it close. A lot of Ramondre Stevenson, a lot of Damian Harris. Yeah, one of them's going to score. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I'm, I think may, it might be the confident or like the, the optimism of Mac Jones's injury news leaking into this. I'm just optimistic going into this game. You know, it's not, yeah. like I said, I am miles more optimistic going into this currently situated than I was going against the Ravens. Um, I'm looking for a good game plan here. Something yeah, that, easy. Where Brian that, you know, Hoyer has to throw it like it. 20 times. That's, That's it. it. You said it. Game plan. It's a good, you need a good game plan. If you are looking for a good game plan to me, there is, and to everybody else it should be, there is nobody better than Bill Belichick. This is where he makes, this is where Belichick earns the greatest coach of all time title. You yeah. go in there with a game plan that beats Aaron Rodgers with your backup quarterback with an offense that people yes. have, you know, that isn't really performing well. If you go in there and beat the Packers, with Brian Hoyer as your quarterback, arguably it's not going to be an impressive offensive game. You have to think yeah. that that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Th this is one of those games. And I, I feel, okay. I think I just cracked the code. That's probably why I'm so confident about it because it's one of those ones where I'm expecting Belichick to do, to work yeah. his wizardry magic and just come I out with it, a win. I say it to my customers all the time. Bill Belichick could, if, if this was a war type scenario, Bill Belichick could lead an army of armless lesbians into battle and come out victorious easily easily i can i could that's a good that i mean that's a that'd be a wild war but like i could i could see it and then after that we'll, we'll see whatever happens with mac jones after that is what happens yeah, with it uh, as of right now there. he he did not practice he's not at practice right now i would just see in that on yeah, um maybe on Twitter, tomorrow so obviously yeah you know I mean, we are taking it day by day that's what we're yes, that's what we're doing we here um, that's what it's the Patriots are doing. That's what Belichick's doing. It is day, day, day to day, day by day, yeah. however many days, tomorrow day, today, who knows? Next day, Wednesday, Wednesday. all days, all days that you could take. Um, so I feel this was, this was good. I feel, I feel much better now about the Patriots and about Mac Jones than I did uh, even fucking 48 hours ago right now. Yeah. I feel like. Just got to let it simmer. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, I, I know. I think I even, I might've even texted you. I was ready to just end the season, but now I kind of looking at it logically. Yeah. You beat the pack. No, knowing hopefully that, he, knowing that he could come back soon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that this, as did I, knowing that this at worst is an eight week injury, those eight weeks, not, not nothing too crazy. I feel like the Patriots can still hang in there in an AFC that is wide open right now. Very yeah. wide open. I mean, you have your top team, so you got the Chiefs, the Bills. Um, yeah, somehow the Miami is still up there. You yeah. gotta think that Miami is gonna is gonna fall back to the pack. Maybe not all the way. I think back. they're pretenders. 
yeah. to yeah i don't i they're definitely not as good as they're playing right now will they make the playoffs i might just be a case of because of how the afc is right now but yeah the titans not impressive colts no. not good um no. the Bengals, they're still trying to figure that the Bengals are kind of like the patriots they're starting to still try to figure their shit out uh yeah. raiders i think we've expressed our views about the raiders um not great so, so you really have the bills and the chiefs and then everything else is kind of the, Raider, kind of your, the ravens are like kind of in there but Lamar ravens ravens yeah 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 I, I don't know how i always forget about the ravens i have no idea why because you hate um them. But yeah, so I mean, you have those three teams that are going to be solid. They're going to get playoff spots, and everybody else. I mean, I, I still think one word answer, Liam. Are the Patriots still making the playoffs this year? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think there's no. Yeah, yeah. The only way they don't is if they, they go on a losing streak in this eight game stretch and Mac Jones doesn't come back. That's the only way yeah. I see them not making it. But yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I'm feeling good. Do you have? Um, do you have any thoughts about, you know, Mac Jones, the game, all that before we hit our game breakers and dip out of here? Nothing. Think Nothing, right? It. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think we did, we did a damn good job covering that shit too. Um, Amen. game breakers, sir, you go first. Who is your game breaker going into, this is a weird game to pick game breakers. Cause it's, I don't, I it's, it's weird. You got backups, things going on. Who do you got? I, I have no idea who I'm picking by the way. I'm, that, that's why I had you go first. I'm still thinking. Ramondre Stevenson. That's okay. my game breaker. We're going to yep. need a big run game here. It's going to be split between Damian Harris and him. We know what to expect from Damian Harris. He's a stud. He's going to yep. score. This yep. is going to be a one-two punch. Let's see what our backup, our split carry running back can do. Last game, pretty damn good. 12 for 73, 6.1 yards per carry and a tub. We've sh- seen before. Last year, killed it. Rookie year. Murky preseason. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of faith. I think Ramondre Stevenson has another big game. This is all going to be the run game. Brian Hoyer is going to have to work off the play action pass. You know, I would love to say Brian Hoyer, but that's not realistic. I yeah, think no, if we are going to win, we need strong contributions from the running game. Damian Harris is always going to give you that. We need a little more Ramondre. Ramondre. Okay. I Yeah, so since you... You went offense. I'll go defense. Um, I think I'm going Matt Judon. I think he has yep. at least one sack. Um, I think he is a terror on Aaron Rodgers because I feel like the yeah. Patriots defense is good enough to cover or the, the Patriots secondary good enough to cover green Bay's weapons where I think Aaron Rodgers might have to hold on to the many. ball. They don't. And by the way, we didn't even talk about it. The last game, Kyle Duggar was out. If Kyle Duggar is in, I think that Ravens game looks completely different. Yeah. Um, Cause I think he covers Mark Andrews a little bit better, but Kyle Duggar, I guess is at practice. So all yeah, signs pointing to him coming back. So I think him being there, the, the defense being pretty much at full strength. Um, Raekwon McMillan too, the linebacker. He is, I guess um, he's been practicing. So he might be back. I'm still going Matt Judon. I think he has definitely has a sack. He's, he's kind of, he's all over the field. He's, he's in the backfield. He's hurrying Rogers. He's doing all that stuff. So you got, uh, Stevenson, which I think I, that's that I think is as good of a lock as you can possibly big baller pick. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. so you got Stevenson. I got Judon. Let's see. Let, let's hope the, uh, let's hope the, streak, let's, ride. let's hope the streak goes, um, at least for me. Yeah. And then you can start your streak here with Stevenson and yeah, then we'll go. Seriously. Um, so good luck to Brian Hoyer next week, uh, or, or this weekend, assuming he starts, uh, if Mac Jones does start for some reason, forget everything yep. that we say. Hey, forget exactly. everything that we say. <laughs> Sun- Sunday is also a day. You never know how Mac will be come Sunday. Sunday is one of the days that might be taken by day, day by day, day, day mm-hmm. by day. Um, it's a four o'clock game too. Gives him the morning to kind of get himself some the time. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shoot him up with whatever they got to shoot him up with and let him go. They will. So um, for Liam McDade, I'm Mike Sullivan. This was Tuck Rule Takes, episode 50, milestone episode, Rob Ninkovich episode. Um, Hopefully, Judon has some Rob Ninkovich-like plays, and that's Patriots come out with a win, hopefully. so Game-winning sack, fumble, interception, give me any of them. Next week, I hope we're talking about that. I hope we're both right with our game breakers, coming off a win, going into a nice and easy Lions game. So, Tuck Rule Takes, we out. See ya.
Suivez. Suivez.